Today, we're talking the best cards at every single price point at every position right now in Madden 25 Ultimate Team. If you guys are new to this series or new to my content, we've been making it for the last two years. What we look for, I can show you better than I can explain it, but we have high level, mid level, low level. Our high level is 300K and up, mid level 300K to 100K and low levels 100K down. So whether you're an all money spent and kind of a player that just kind of hunts for good value or a no money spent player or just getting started, this video is for every kind of Madden player. And of course, we're going to touch on every single position in today's video. High level, McCarthy. Stroud does exist, but I still think McCarthy is better. Mid-level, because Stroud came out, Josh Allen is not that much worse than CJ Stroud. It's not that much. It's not a 300K difference. Josh Allen for 100K is a great scoop of a great purchase if you haven't used them already. If you're still using them, I still think he's really good value. And for our low level, 12K for Anthony Richardson. I mean, you kind of pay for what you get, but really good throw power with good speed at the quarterback position is pretty hard to find. So, or it's not that affordable. So I do like a rich a lot. Also Bryce Young's card is someone that could have made it for the low level guys. 42K. I don't hate this card. I just like his stats are more consistent, like has an 85 short accuracy, but it comes down to what you believe in. I do like Bryce Young is all right. He's okay. I don't like, I don't love him obviously, but he's all right for the low level. But I like, I like Richardson a little bit better. I'd rather have the higher throw power and the slightly better speed um it is pretty close but yeah it's tough for the low level let me know what you guys think richardson or young if you're looking to make a purchase for your mutt squad head to my sponsor mmo exp cheap reliable fast mutt coins use code for you check out for five percent off a link for their website is in the description we now have our running backs i'm gonna start this part of the video off by saying this the best card at the position will not be a part of this video today because he's a free card that we got in season one, Mike Allstott. I wholeheartedly believe that Mike Allstott's RB1. After the spin's gone, you look for the broken things in this game. And right now, to me, it's the boom tech system with weight and heavy running backs, especially ones that can move as well as Allstott can. The air truck, the broken tackles, the way that he fights, you're not going to see on, on any other card. And Marshall Lynch cards, we have them for our high level, but I don't love the way Marshall Lynch cards play because it's tough to replicate how Marshall played in the Madden because he only weighs 215. I mean, in a game where weight matters, Unless you give him like a freight train or, or an angry runs, he's not going to feel as broken as he really should or as Marshawn card as Marshawn card should feel. Um, of course, it, it's a dime a dozen when we get like a broken Marshawn card. I would probably put Marshawn at like RB3 right now. I, I would still lean Chris Johnson because the spin, it's dead, but it's not It's not Aaron Hernandez gone. Like it's still, it's still kind of here. It still kind of is, I guess. But 87 speed. You know, good juke, good, you know, it's all right. Spin rating's good, right? But it's not what it once was for our mid-level. High-level Marshawn, mid-level Chris Johnson. And low-level, trust me, I wanted to go find someone cheaper, but the value of 100K for Raheem Mostert, I was, like, finding guys that were, like, 85K, and I would rather just spend that little extra. And, yes, the quick spin is dead. It's not gone. It's still all right. It, it's not as good, but I think it's better than what you're going to find on a lot of running backs underneath this price point. If you want to go someone a little cheaper... I mean, where do you even go for someone a little bit cheaper at running back? I mean, there's uh, Eric Gray, I guess you can. I'm not, I'm not sorting my speed or something on price. Eric Gray, I guess you can go with, right? He's an option. Um, does the new Camara get a high spin? Camara technically would get fast spin. He technically does. Uh, he should, but it's not. It's just, let's just call it the spin now. I'm not going to call it the fast spin. It's, it once was. All right, can I get an RIP to the fast spin in the chat, man? Please, RIP fast spin if you're watching the video right now. Yeah, it probably would be him. I don't, yeah, probably. But like 87K, pay that little extra 20K for Raheem. I'd rather just do that, right? At fullback, we're not going to spend too much time here. High level is Kyle Juszczyk, mid level CJ Ham. A lot of debate here on this last one between, you know, to myself. But I ended up going Pat Ricard because he's 300 pounds and gets really good impact block, lead, pla lead block, power block, run block, all that stuff. Uh, even good pass block if you want to like max protect or whatever. So it's kind of like having an extra lineman out there. So. I do find value, do find value in Pat Ricard. At wide receiver, we got three for each price point here. High level, worthy, and does, of course, uh, while I'm recording this, the Chiefs have not played yet. So if the Chiefs win tonight, he will get a plus one permanent speed boost next Thursday when game time, I guess, part two comes out. If it is, if there isn't any part two, I don't know. But uh, worthy, great card, fast. Yeah, we love him, 5'11", okay? Uh, we have Maserati Mar for the high point as well. 87 speed, of course, does get the double me ability. And here we do go Keon Coleman. 86 speed, but the 91 catching for like high balls and possession catching is really good, especially with, you know, I feel like I do get KO'd a pretty good amount, but good COD, good route running, good spec catch, decent release. So 
Those are our three high-level guys. Worthy, Marvin, Keon, Coleman, mid-level. We got we got Malik Neighbors. Malik Neighbors, 250 into our mid-level price point. I love the card. And we'll also get a boost uh, from our one of our low-level guys. You see him right here, Brian Thomas Jr., of course, will be mentioned today. But 87 speed at six foot. We love to see that. We then got Tristan Jackson. Now that the quick spin is dead, there's more value in cards like this or even Keon Coleman, right? Because who cares? Who cares? You can't do it anyway. So Neighbors, Tristan Jackson. Honestly, I should probably stop, stop mentioning the quick spin because people are probably watching this. People might be watching this like a week from now and have no idea what I'm talking about since it is dead. But neighbors, Tristan Jackson, Randy Moss for our mid levels, we kind of gradient down the price level here. But then low level, we have the 83 Steve Smith Sr. with 85 speed. You could also go Worthy's low overall card with 86 speed too, but I like having these little extra stats in there. I do think it does go a long way for a one speed difference. That's why Steve Smith's here today, 50K. Randy Moss, six foot four, 84 speed. Like Kim a lot, and then Brian Thomas, of course, 47k, 86 speed, 86 acceleration at six foot three, 209, has the stats, even decent as a ball carrier. So those are your wide receivers. A lot of good names here, a lot of good options at wide receiver. A lot of good variety, too. I really do like the wide receiver position right now. At tight end, this is as like perfect as the price points get. High level is Vernon Davis, 1.25 mil. Uh, of course, I gotta say it. I have to mention it. I don't want to do it, but the, you know, more quick spin, which does hurt his value a little bit. His price did dip after they nerfed it, but now it's right back up where it was before because he's still just the fastest, still the best after the catch. He's still just a stud. Mid level, Sam Laporta, and then low level, who actually does get a good juke animation for some reason. He just moves really well. And then low level, I got Easy E, Evan Ingram. This card still plays great. I've seen him do some magnificent things. Uh, Brock Bowers is somewhere in the middle here between these two, but doesn't really have a point. He's like 400k right now, so it's like Laporta, same, but like eight stuff. But I think this is pretty clear cut to me. Before the offensive linemen, we're gonna get through these ones pretty quick, but you're gonna see a lot of legends just because they have high strength and so do their lower overall cards. You're gonna see that a lot. But uh, left tackle Willie Rofe, pretty easy here for me. Uh, there you go. Good strength. And we have the lower overall Willie Rove for low level. Also, not every price point is going to have a spot here for the offensive lineman as they're not as deep of a position. Uh, if we go over to the left guard, we got Larry Allen. We then have lower Larry Allen for the lower price point. And then we have our center. We have Travis Frederick. And here we actually do not have legend collectible Travis Frederick. We have Robert Hainsley. Hainsey. 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 Uh, he's got good strength. We look for his strength and over 80 and all the stats. And he's got... It's a really good card for 90k. Really good card. I like him a lot. Uh, we then have Travis Fredericks. Okay, we do have we do have him for like a little bit lower for price point if you want to go there, just because of the strength. 82 strength at 80 overall is just hard to find a good position. But of course, you can use Jeff Saturday. The, there's free guys you can use there. Ma mainly just Jeff Saturday. Going over to right guard, we have Larry Little with good strength, good run block stats. We then have AVT with 84 strength and 80s pretty much across the board besides run block power. Going over to right tackle, we have Joe Alt for high level, Trent Brown for mid level, and if you want to go a little bit cheaper, uh, we got Titus Howard. It's just a little bit cheaper. Titus Howard's here too. I like his strength in the 80, 80, 80 across the board. Coming from today's, or I guess yesterday while you're watching this, is game time promo. At left end, we got Montez Sweat. Probably a, a very bad buy, but he is the best high level, high price point left end. Uh, at mid-level, Greg Russo, I think he is probably the best value one here. Him or Watt, I both like, but Russo is a stud. Also does get right end chems if you want to go that way, but good speed, good acceleration, good power move. Uh, his car just plays well when I used him. And then finally, for low level, we have Kalija. Kalija Kansi, and uh, he looks pretty good too. 80 speed, 85 acceleration, 80 finesse move. Kind of lower strength, but solid against the run. And for what I've seen of this card, a good weight. He can hold his own out there and does play pretty well. For right end, we have Micah Parsons for high level, a pretty loaded position. You could, I don't think you really could debate Chase Young, Miles Garrett over Micah. So I would, I'm, I'm going Micah as the best here. And we then have Micah Parsons again for mid level. I really don't like anyone in that price point, in that price range, but Micah's got good speed, good acceleration, and 84 finesse move. For low level, AJ Ebenezer for 100K to stay within our boundaries, but it is worth paying that little bit of extra just to get Miles Garrett. I think he is better than AJ Ebenezer. And then if, if, as you go down here, you're going to see this, this position right here gets very thin. It's very weak. So I, I would probably go Ebenezer for like low level, but I would say pay that little extra for Miles Garrett. It will 
you'll 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 be thanking yourself for sure. At defensive tackle, high level. It is mean Joe Green. He's the best DT in the game, but our mid-level guy is pretty damn good too because of acceleration. Acceleration is one of the big stats I look for on defensive tackles, being able to kind of get that quick jump, that quick burst of speed in a short distance. That's where I find value. So having good acceleration is really good, and Hargrave gets that for 110. And for a low level, we have a high acceleration, kind of lower speed guy, but a big build guy with 80 power move for 62K. Uh, Haloti is definitely a stud. Even this card like, isn't terrible. You just kind of lose the threshold and the power move when you make that downgrade to the 81. But those are our three defensive tackles today. And left outside linebacker for high level, we got Clay Matthews. Perfect traits, 85 speed with good acceleration, good against the run. You guys see it? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, it's all good for Clay Matthews here. He's our best high level. Uh, left outside linebacker mid level Jalen Phillips 80 80 83 speed 87 acceleration traits are also yes 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 and then for our low level same traits and he is almost 80 80 with 83 speed so I do like the Clay Matthews right here 65k for our low level the Clay Matthews card is actually really good this year I feel like normally his cards are pretty mid but this one th these ones are good they're really good for middle linebacker the high level is Luke Keekley. Our mid-level is going to be all pro Fred. I like Fred a lot. I was between him and Chance Campbell here. But the reason why I went with Fred was just because of the zone coverage. Sometimes you're not always usering. What does it say? Short stride bread loaf. Is that? Oh, because he holds with one hand the football. That makes sense. I didn't know that they called it bread loaf. That's kind of funny. <laughs> but um, yeah, 85 zone coverage. If you find yourself clicked off, Fred can still hold his own compared to Chance Campbell, who only has 70 zone coverage. And finally, low level. Everyone knows who it is. It is Devon Diablo. 86 speed, 88 acceleration, 44K. One of the better users and cards in this game because he has good hit power. As a user, he's really good. But again, not super complete stats like a Fred Warner has like the 85 zone. If Diablo's out there by himself and you're not controlling him, dude's in no man's land. We now have right outside linebacker. This is my least favorite position in the game right now. I feel like there's just bad value everywhere. So if you can get off by not using a right outside linebacker, I would try to do so. Lawrence Taylor is just really expensive. I would even argue that this Nate Herbig, this Nick Herbig, I thought his name was Nate Herbig. Is this like, is that like his brother or something? It might be his brother. I thought it was Nate Herbig. He, it's gotta be his brother. I'm not tripping, right? Is it? Is there? Is it Nate? Is there a Nate Herbig? Wait, I'm, I'm tripping. Am I tripping? Herbig? Is, is it, was it always Nick? No, there is a Nate Herbig. This is not who I was thinking about. I'm going to be honest. I'm not. That's not who I was thinking about. <laughs> it must have always been Nick. I don't know. Uh, but he is not that much worse than Lawrence Taylor. Like, not that big of a difference. His price will fall next week when the new team of the week comes out for week one, which I'm excited. So excited for the NFL, man. I'm so hyped. But, um, yeah, for high level, it's got to be LT, right? For mid level, there's like three guys that fall into this category. And it unfortunately is Quincy Williams. Quincy's on my team right now. I have a Jets theme team. Only reason why he's the one guy I chose was because of the high zone coverage. This does bail me out sometimes. His good zone does sometimes actually do something, and that's why I do still like Quincy. Gotta give him some love for that. And for low level, it's just JOK. I, it kind of a similar player, kind of as a downgraded Quincy, to be honest. But I again, I do not like his position at all. And I guess his name was always Nick Herbig. I don't. Am I? What, are you really? At cornerback, again, just like receivers, three at each level. There is one guy that is left out here, and I want to know what you guys think. Uh, Nate Wiggins, though, big play Slay, and Derek Stingley. The guy who's left out is Mel Blunt. You know, it's tough between the... I, I think they're the, the, they're all really good, but I only could choose three, and I do like the way Stingley plays, just a little bit better. So I'm going to go with Derek Stingley. I, I, I guess if you play more zone coverage, you would probably lean... You would probably lean Mel Blunt, and Mel Blunt's also better against the run. I mean, there is a real debate for Mel Blunt. I do like Mel Blunt though. Like it, it just comes down to what your defense is. I think Nate Wiggins is, is a no matter what guy, six foot two with this speed, ninety nine return. Is that facts? Okay, whatever. Uh, Eighty nine like man coverage zone, and if you're if the Ravens won while you're watching this last night, he'll be getting a plus one speed. And uh, I think Slay is kind of the same. He's just a demon and does, and does get the, uh, like the AKA X factors, like the center fielder card gets. And then I guess Stingley, it's either Stingley or Blunt. Mid-level, Sertain, Revis with Universal, and Cromartie. I chose Cromartie over 
um, Richard Sherman, but it really comes down to um, whether you play man or zone a lot more. If you play more zone, then you would go Sherman, obviously. So that one's kind of interchangeable too. And for low level, we have Cromarty for low level here, 84 speed, 6 foot 2, 81 man coverage. We have Micah Abraham. Abraham, why did I say it like that? Why did I say it like that? 85 speed, 88 acceleration with good man coverage. And then for our final guy here, we have the 84 speed, 6 foot, 85 acceleration, Shaquille Griffin. At free safety, for high level, it is the center fielder card. He is, in my opinion, the best in the game right now at the free safety position. Looking at all these guys, I think he definitely is. I would then say Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas also now for these uh, this new head-to-head -head house rules uh, game mode that we have. Earl can play corner for you. He's got over 80 man and 86 zone with good hit power. This card did play well for me, but I did go get the center fielder who's just, just a little bit taller. Pretty good amount taller. Um, and then for low level, I have two guys. I have a lower level guy. That's one Thornhill, six foot, 85 speed. But I had to mention Paul Krause for almost 100K because he does have 83 zone coverage, 84 speed at six foot three, and is pretty solid against the run for a free safety. So I had to mention him, both these cards for low level, kind of a higher end, low level, and then a lower end, low level. And then we have mid and high. And finally, strong safety. This one is tough because Tony Jefferson, Justin Simmons, for high level it, like tony jefferson better speed a little shorter three inches shorter but really good really good against the run get has good zone coverage but i think right now in a ko list game you have to go justin simmons at number one with that extra height 88 zone like the big thing for me is the hit power and in, in this matter hit six really good they when guys have good hit power they feel more solid especially a guy like tony jefferson who does get stonewall as a pre-baked it's just nice to have but let me know what you guys think down below i really think that for high level you can go either way and if you do want to get your hands on tony jefferson just wait till next week his price will fall when the um new team of the week cards come out but to me this one's really close and honestly for the rest of, for the rest of these mid and low i have two guys so for mid level ken houston or cam chancellor ken houston is going to be your guy if you kind of mix in zone and man because you've got to have good man coverage a guy that can stick for you ken houston's great for that but if you're looking for like a user sub linebacker or even like an over the top guy who's not really in man assignments, I still love Cam Chancellor's card. Yeah, both these guys are just really good options. I think you can play them both in the field at the same time. One over the top, one as a user. And then for low level, it's kind of the same thing where I actually do like Jordan Battle for over the top, six foot one, 87 acceleration, 85 speed. And you see the physicals on Battle are pretty similar to like Cam Chancellor, Ken Houston. I mean, it's only like a one overall difference. So of course that makes sense. But. Uh, I do like Jordan Battle, and then I also like Jeremy Chin. 86 speed, 86 acceleration with 81 zone coverage, decent hit power at 6'3", 220. So, strong safety, a pretty loaded position right now in this game. But again, let me know. Tony Jefferson, Justin Simmons, let me know. Hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you boys in the next one.